Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me for another episode of What's in the Box. And this morning, I'm back to an aircraft subject. And we'll look at the 148th scale Edouard BF 109E1 email Profi Pack Edition. And uh, I've talked about the history of this aircraft before. I do want to say a couple of things that are specific to the E1 variant. There was an E0 actually that did see production. But the E1 um, is really kind of pre-Battle of Britain. I'm sure a few E1s took place uh, in the fighting, but uh, not to any large degree. Uh, but uh, this version had no cannons. There would have been two MG-17s uh, mounted in wing roots, and then the uh, two MG-17s in the nose cowling. So basically there were four rifle caliber machine guns equipped on this aircraft. So it was a little light on the firepower side, and uh, there were 500 rounds per gun, which was positive. So you can imagine, if you're trying to down this you know, full-size aircraft that's designed to be sturdy and resistant to damage, you had to pump quite a few rounds into it to, uh, to bring it down. You know, you got to either hit the pilot or do some serious damage to control surfaces or engines or maybe a radiator. Uh, that was the uh, idea behind the E3. The E3 was upgunned to uh, the MGFF 20 millimeter cannons that were in the wings. Although, ironically, it did not fire uh, explosive rounds. Originally, the MGFF basically was just a giant machine gun that fired solid shot. And, uh, but it had a pretty slow rate of fire. Its cyclic rate was only around, I think, 400 or 440 rounds per minute. So uh, it didn't have a real high rate of fire. <clears throat> they did change it in the E4 variants to uh, be able to fire explosive rounds. And, of course, that began to make a uh, pretty serious difference in combat. So I want to talk briefly about the Profi Pack versus the Weekend Edition. So Edward basically offers two versions of their kits, or there are two product lines, so to speak. There's the Weekend Edition and the Profi Pack. So the Weekend Edition is supposed to be a simplified version, no photo etch, uh, one painting scheme, a painting and marking guide supplied, so basically one set of decals. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, <clears throat> none of all the little other nice little details, like the canopy masks. And the canopy masks are worthwhile, and they sell a ton of them. And the the weekend edition kits go from anywhere from I don't know seventeen nineteen dollars up to about twenty twenty one dollars. The Profi Pack kits can be had in the U.S. from anywhere from twenty seven to thirty five dollars, depending on the kit. The BF one tens, which of course is a bigger aircraft and going to be a bigger model, are a little pricier because of the additional plastic. But guys, I really think that the Profi Pack is where the value is because for Typically, a $10 bill difference for $10 more, I get the um, canopy masks pre-cut. I get four or five decal versions. I get the interior photo etch, the zoom color, you know, colored photo etch set, and then additional photo etch set details on that. You know, is it more complex? Yeah, it is. Um, but you don't have to use it. It's there. I like that. I really think it's worth the $10 additional charge um, over the weekend editions. Now, I can understand that there's nothing wrong with buying a weekend edition. I'm, I'm just I'm looking at value here. Just what, what do I get for my money? And I really think that the Profi Pack is, uh, you know, the way to go. So, uh, let's get inside the kit. A beautiful box art. Now, this kit, um, I did see a date on it here earlier. Uh, this kit dates from 2012. So this kit's very new. It's 148 scale, as I'd said before. And I always love the Edouard box art. It's just uh, really beautiful. And you'll notice this glossy paper uh, across the box. So let's uh, let's take a look at what we have on the inside. We've got the instruction sheet. Some, I had removed some sprues earlier to take a look at this plastic. I do want to briefly uh, have a glance at the instruction sheet. It's glossy paper. A staple booklet style. I love that, and it's a full size. You know, eight and a half by eleven. That would be inches. Sorry, guys across the pond. That's uh, the old imperial system sh rearing its head again. And uh, I mean, look at the the first page. So we've got these beautiful um, sprue maps showing, of course, the blue areas would be the excluded parts, showing you the photo etch detail parts that are included. Uh, it's a really nice job from Edouard. They even have a call out on the the canopy mask. And as with most aircraft builds, um, we then begin construction with the cockpit, cockpit interior. That's normal. And I, I do want to point out how they, they show you um, 
here. This is in the instruction part, for example, for the addition of photo etch detail that would be inside the radiator housing. And uh, you don't have to use it. It's, it's giving you the assist. The, the question mark. It's, it's optional. You know, you can go either way. Um, I I really appreciate that. Same thing here. They're showing you the plastic part. And of course, this would be for the router pedals. You can use the photo etch, or you can use the plastic part. It's entirely your choice. And they're even you know giving you the you know calling out the color to paint those and the RLM uh, color color callouts by the way, which uh, I really appreciate them doing. So. You do have to shave off the detail. You need to use a chisel blade on your knife, and uh, to remove the detail uh, for the you know the canopy, uh, uh, you know, or excuse me, uh, cockpit detail, and like on the instrument panel, if you want to install that zoom photo etch set. And you take a look in the next page and look at this. We have a beautiful, fully detailed engine for the interior. So this is uh, very similar to what you'd have in the Zvezda kit, and I've reviewed the, the Zvezda kit before. In my opinion, and I'm not knocking the Edward, this is, the Zvezda is probably one of the best values uh, in the market in a 109 kit right now, and the, at least in 148 scale. So there's that beautiful Daimler Benz uh, DB601 engine, a really unique inverted V design. I've always thought that was very intriguing with mechanical fuel injection and basically a, a simple analog computer controlling the air fuel mixture, the oil pressure. That was one of the advantages, by the way, that this aircraft had over the Spitfire. And history seems to leave that out. You don't hear a lot of discussion about that. The Rolls-Royce Merlin engine was obviously a superb engine, but the early variants were not as sophisticated as the, the Daimler-Benz engine. Uh, the, the 109 pilots, guys, just had to fly. A Spitfire pilot had to monitor his gauges and control the oil pressure. Uh, all those things were important. Uh, that was a one distinct advantage that uh, the early 109s had over the uh, early Spitfires. So we continue into the uh, fuselage. Uh, here we're joining the halves, installing the engine in the cockpit base. That all looks very straightforward. We continue on with the assembly of the wings and the airframe. Uh, you'll notice they even do the uh, machine gun base, which is really nice. Uh, that's going to be in the cowling, and the machine guns are nice. And there's, I've looked at the parts here. We'll get to them in a minute. There's really nice detail on the cooling jacket on these guns. So we just continue on with adding the cowling, more details on the on the airframe, the, uh, attaching the ailerons. Really a beautiful kit. And uh, I want to point out how great the color and marking painting guide is. There are, let's see, how many? One, two, three, four, five versions to choose from. And all, of course, in full color on this gloss paper, and you can see the detail. Notice the RLM color callouts down here in the bottom. So if you don't have uh, the brand of paint, they're calling out H numbers. That's going to be uh, that's going to be Guns of Sangio or GSI Creos or Mr. Hobby Color paints down here in the bottom, which is fine. Although they're kind of rare. Um, I'm, I think the guys in Japan use them quite a bit. I don't know how available. Um, the uh, GSI Krios or Guns of Sanya stuff is in the UK. Maybe one of you guys can uh, comment down below and let me know how uh, readily available they are because they're, you know, next to impossible to find in the US. I've always, anytime I've ever ordered any, I've ordered a few. I had to order them from, from Asia. Several variants. I'll tell you one that really got my attention was this um, version C. Jagdgeschwader uh, 52 or 52. Husum, Germany, 1940. I really find the yellow nose with the blue eagle emblem uh, very striking. Um, I would have a tendency, I think, to be interested in building this version once I get around to this aircraft. I really like that. And the last page uh, on this painting and marking guide actually has all of the maintenance symbols, all the little fiddly um, decals that need to go on the aircraft. This is one of the most concise diagrams I've seen for the installation of all this. It's so really nicely done, Edward. Way to go. Way to go. So, that's enough of that. Let's take a look at the plastic. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to knock the camera there, guys. Apologize. So, first screw, what we have here are the wing bottom halves, um, wing top halves. Beautiful recessed panel line detail with rivet detail. I'm going to let you guys uh, take a look at this. I'm in my handy piece of cardboard. Let's help the camera focus better. As you can see, fine recessed panel eyes once again. Superb, beautiful um, rivet detail. 
the stuff's going to take a wash beautifully. If you're doing a panel line wash, really nicely done, Edward. Set that sprue aside. Let's take in the next sprue. The next one, what we have here basically are the two fuselage halves, um, the cowling, the uh, hard point to install Bombay, which I'm not sure is used on an E1. But once again, look at the detail on the fuselage. Really nicely done. Some weird kind of marks in the plastic, but I don't think any of that's going to show once it's primed and painted. There's the other half. Take a look at the detail on the cowling. Very detailed, nicely done, Edward. There's that sprue. And let's take a look at the next sprue. What we have here is the filigree parts. Trim wheel for the cockpit. We've actually got some ordnance, some SC-50 and what appears to be an SC-250 bomb and uh, rear stabilizers, uh, some cockpit detail, that sort of thing, landing gear struts and I'll let you guys take a look at all this. Now the control surfaces had of course canvas covering over them. They've done a nice job of rendering the canvas detail for example on the vertical stabilizer and uh, the uh, horizontal stabilizers on the tail. You can see the uh, fabric detail on those is actually pretty nicely done. There's the detail on the trim, trim wheel. Now, uh, I say trim wheel, I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows what a trim wheel is. I am no pilot or an aircraft expert, but basically when you're in level flight and the plane wants to kind of yaw this way or that way, the pilot can use the trim wheel to modify the control surfaces in flight to make them come straight and true level, straight up and down or left and right. Uh, that's, that's what a trim wheel is for. Now I mentioned the guns, the MG-17 machine guns. Take a look at that really did a fantastic job. You can see the detail on the cooling jackets. They're pretty small of course in 148th scale but I think they're going to do a great job once you get them installed in the nose cowling. Alright, there's that sprue. And last but not least we have a drop tank, we have the nice looking engine and prop uh, and the supercharger. Uh, here's my point about so you don't have to use the photo etch. They've included the rudder pedals and photo etch. But look at how detailed the uh, plastic uh, rudder pedals are. I wouldn't have any problem at all using those. And I just have to say, just look at the supercharger. <laughs> I love that. They did a fantastic job on the supercharger. Here's the prop, of course. And please check out the detail on the engine. Now, the engine, of course, is molded in two halves. So uh, there you're seeing the spark plug wires. You could really wire that bad boy up and add some crazy detail, but I'm, I'm not to that level of modeling yet, so maybe someday. There's engine mounts here and here. They look really nice. Really, overall, guys, I mean, that, there's no flash in this plastic. Uh, it's really beautifully done. Um, I didn't see, there are some marks in the plastic, but they're not sink marks, so there's nothing there you have to correct. And uh, I think they did a really good job. Let's take a look at uh, the decal sheets. So basically there's two decal sheets. Uh, we have your maintenance stencils, which is what you see here. And that's all the little tiny fiddly decals. Uh, that would, you know, that'll be interesting applying those. And I did apply a really nice piece of wax paper to help protect the decal sheets and transport in the box. The other decal sheet, of course, is going to have the Balkenkreuz and the Hockenkreuz or swastika emblems. Um, now this is not uh, censored. Hamilcar did a recent video on his frustrations with censored kits. Um, I can totally understand where he's coming from. That's a major pain in the ass. But you'll notice that this is actually partitioned so that I guess someone could cut this away. But I don't really believe that a government bureaucrat is doing that. I gotta believe that uh, a distributor or a wholesaler of some type is doing that, uh, cutting those out, because I don't see a government employee actually doing that. Uh, you'll notice that they have the broken up swastikas, the puzzle style swastikas here. But uh, there's that blue eagle. These are in register. Um, they're beautiful. They're a little glossy. You can see uh, the carrier film comes right up to the edge, but uh, it looks really nice. Now, uh, I want to take, uh, let you guys take a look at the photo etch here. Now, this is um, the zoom set. So this has uh, the colored photo etch for the cockpit instrumentation. 
I don't know if you guys have ever really looked at this very closely, so let me bring this up to the camera for you. And these actually go on in layers, so you have to take a chisel blade or a micro chisel and remove the raised plastic detail from the actual plastic part, sand that down, and then you attach these in layers, one layer on top of the other, and they're beautiful. You'll notice the seat belts also too, and they're even pre-painted as well. There's some more gauges here in different colors. Really, um, really beautiful looking photo etch. There's another Freda photo etch here um, that also, which you see in the Edouard kit. This has those rudder pedals, which I've mentioned a couple of times already. And you can see that, uh, the you know, they're beautifully done. Edouard has been doing photo etch for a long time, so there's no surprises. Really, a uh, really good looking set there. And then last thing that comes with the Profi Pack, of course, is the uh, pre-masked, or the, uh, excuse me, the uh, canopy masks. That's why I think the Profi Packs are such a great deal. So, I've run a little longer than I wanted to. I apologize for that, but I certainly appreciate your patience. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in, and I certainly uh, appreciate um, all of the support of my channel. You guys have been so great. And uh, I hope you guys get to continue me build with Shane on this uh, BF-109. So. But thanks for watching. Uh, everybody have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.